my sensors indicate a new episode of Dave's Vintage Apple Tech has just been uploaded. Hi, this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, and last week, the last video that I did, I showed you how to do the G4 Cube speaker transplant. I got a hold of those new old stock Apple uh, Mac Pro speakers and uh, we swapped them on the original wiring harness, the enclosure and everything. They're working great. And I also told you that when I got the refoam kit in for the original Cube speakers, um, we're going to show you how to do it and I got them. So, this is what we got guys so this is out of the original cube and so anyway I've already started cleaning the glue off of this and I'll show you how we do that now, that's the hardest process is taking all the glue and of course regluing it's a different matter entirely as well uh, I've already feathered all this out the paint so we can touch this up with some paint and uh, it'll be pretty close to the actual color and we'll do that before we actually put the new foam speaker uh, attachment on it there and this is what they look like and they're a pretty close match um, the only thing I noticed with the uh, actual hardened cardon speakers is this bubbles a little thicker on the original ones um, but these are the right size they fit on it just fine and I'll show you here so I'm just gonna get it this well anyway you kinda get the idea so it, it'll all fit on there look it'll look real nice when it's all done that'll be underneath that cone there. So anyway, yeah guys, so we're gonna get this all put back together and then we're also going to polish up the acrylic enclosures on the cube. Uh, I'm gonna make that look a lot nicer there. And uh, so yeah, so it'll be a good information for you guys. And um, so yeah, so um, we're gonna go and uh, get set up so we can do this. Back in a minute. All right, so we got the alcohol here. And I'll show you. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kinda take your time and just go in this outer ring and you'll see all the good grief here, right there. Got a nasty Q-tip there, and that's that's all the stuff we need to get off of it because you want to make sure you get a good bond. You don't have to be doing this again for a long time. So we're gonna do the other end of this here, and it's gonna take time, guys. Like I said, this ain't no 10-minute job. This is gonna take you probably about a really about an hour uh, to do it to get it to where you feel comfortable. Now this one here is, uh, this seems to be going a little faster than the other one that I did. And, um, and of course when we're done we'll blow it all out with the canned air and stuff, get all that stuff out of there because we don't want any chunks floating around in there. But you can see how the dirty, dirty that thing is, it's really dirty. So we'll just keep doing it until you really don't get much off of it. And I'm going to do... Just gonna hit this spot here. I missed a spot. Part of that uh, foam ring here, that in the glue. I'm gonna peel this off here in one piece here in a second here. And I'll tell you what's really handy is if you have these little dental tools, these work fantastic. You can just do all kinds of get into the little intricate spots and stuff on this thing. You can see here's a big, big piece of that coming off of there.
that would definitely speed it up. I'm just using, like I said, I'm just using nice purple alcohol. And um, just do that, go back and scrape, soak it loose again, go back and scrape. And like I said, it takes time to do it because the, <clears throat> the better this looks, the better the outcome will be. And we're just about we're just about done with this outer ring here. Now we're going to start an inside one, and that one, um, like I said, you're not going to get all that off. You just want to get enough off to where that um, the inside of that uh, foam will glue to the back of that dust cover here. And you can see right here, it comes off here like that. See all this crud. Yeah, that's all. That's foam and glue. And like I said, be careful not to bump up against the wire. I mean, you can bump up against it, but <clears throat> you just don't want to unhook anything. Because then you cause yourself a lot of grief. And basically I'm just kind of soaking this stuff loose here. Hey, Smirky, please don't help me. Okay, so. Like I said, I'll take canned air and blow all that, that crud out of there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to start scraping some of this stuff off the uh, inside of the dust cover here. which is attached to the cone here directly. In some ways this is easier, in some ways this is a lot harder. Yes, Smirky, thank you for helping me. You're, that's a problem, you're too helpful, yes. look pretty good guys yeah so yeah I'm happy with that so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and I'm gonna tape this all up so and that up so the only thing that's gonna be exposed is this outer ring here and of course this top part I don't worry about painting that in there if I get a little paint on there it's no big deal it's gonna be covered up anyway with the uh, diaphragm the foam pieces there so yeah okay guys so like I said this is the this is the um, boring part of it now it's gonna start getting exciting because now it's gonna start to look like something when we're, we're done here so 
take a quick look at it there. You can see we're going to get this all painted up here. It'll look real nice when we're done. So uh, we'll be back in a few. And next time you see it, uh, this will all be painted. Okay, be back. Okay guys, so um, we got the uh, enclosure painted. Uh, like I said, I did, all I did is I just taped these up really good. I actually used one of the uh, foam inserts, taped it up, and used that for a guide so I wouldn't get it on any of this stuff on the inside here. So uh, basically, yeah, so we're going to get ready to show you how to glue these down. And uh, like I said, we're ready. And uh, I got a lot of the scratches off of this. I'm going to polish these up just a little bit more. Uh, see if I can get some more of these scratches out of it. Now these are, by the way, aluminum. They're not painted. They are aluminum. And uh, this one here was just a little worse because this, this one had a few little dings on it. I got a lot of them off of it. But uh, I'm going to just work on it just a little bit more. But we're going to uh, glue it together. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a few minutes. Um, basically, uh, what we're going to use, and I'm going to show you just in a second here. So there's lots of different types of glue we can use to glue in the speaker uh, surrounds. They're foam. Uh, certain glues react to that. But for the most part, you can pretty much use a lot of different things. The main thing is it can't be a real rigid glue. You want a little flexibility to it because it's subject to constant vibration and stuff and if it doesn't have much elasticity to it then it could fail. So some of the things you can use is black rubber cement. Uh, you can use um, uh, it's by Loctite. There is a speaker repair adhesive. It's a type of epoxy. You can use Dynamite Extreme. Uh, yeah, that's another method of repairing speakers. You can also use, I uh, believe it's 6000, uh, sold at Walmart. It's another type of adhesive. Uh, it's a form of epoxy, uh, doesn't uh, get real brittle. And you can actually even use like rubber and gasket adhesive too. But what we're gonna use is Flex Seal because this stuff will glue anything. In fact, on that one video I did on, uh, I rescued the, uh, the, the uh, laptop, the Mac there, MacBook uh, Pro. Um, I use this because the hinges pulled loose from the body and they're notorious for that. So we use this and as far as I know it's still holding up just fine so we're going to use this to do the surrounds. Um, this is white in color. Uh, they make it in black too. I just happen to have the white here. So we're going to do that here in just a minute. So what we're going to do is um, when we, I'm going to squeeze some of that glue out and then I'm going to use a brush and we're going to just paint it right on the bead there. I'm going to put a nice liberal coat on it and then when I do that then we're going to lay this down on there like so and then uh, that stuff gets tacky after about five minutes so then I can position it um, and then wherever I move it it's going to stay. And then when that's dry, I will take and push this underneath that cone, that dust cover, and we'll glue that. Okay? And that's the easiest way to do it. You glue, you glue the outer ring, let that set up, then you go back and you glue it underneath this dust cover, which is part, which is attached directly to the voice coil here. So yeah, so it uh, be nice to get these things glued back up. Then what we, once we get these glued up, then we're going to um, go back to the actual speaker enclosures, and I'm going to show you how to polish up the scratches on those. So I'll be back in a minute. And also another th uh, thing to note too is when I painted these, I was going to use my airbrush, but for whatever reason, it was I, I, I'm, I need to replace the needle on it. Um, it was clogged up, it wouldn't spray out right. So what I wound up doing is I actually, believe it or not, I uh, used high heat paint and you can use it like on barbecue grills, 
radiators it's up to 1200 degrees is by Krylon and, and a matte finish and it, the collar is pretty pretty close the camera makes this look a lot wider than what it is but really it's when you look at this with the naked eye it looks pretty close but uh, it dries in 15 minutes and you can see it's got a nice uh, uh, same type of finish that's nice it's a satin finish and it came out really good and uh, like I said, I had that all taped off so I wouldn't get it on there. But out of a rattle can, it worked really good. It doesn't run. It lays down really good. It took me just a couple of coats to do it. And uh, so, yeah. So that's this little thing that uh, I forgot to tell you. But uh, it works really good. And you can, I got that at Lowe's. So I had a can of it, but I had just enough to do one speaker. So I had to go get some. So I just went ahead and touched them both up again. So... All right, guys, so we'll be back in a minute to uh, start to, to glue the enclosures down here. Okay, guys, so we're going to start gluing these up here. So um, this stuff is really, it's very thick. Um, and uh, you want to squeeze a little bit out first because uh, it when you first open the tube, it's kind of real runny, it's watery. But then, you know, you get to kind of mix it up and then it starts getting thick like this. So... When it's like that, it's good. So anyway, I'm just kind of squeezing out here a little bit, a little excess here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush here, and I'm just going to brush some on the inside of this here. So we're going to uh, brush it right here, just like this. Okay, and. Uh, and like I said, nice thing about this stuff is you get a really long work time, okay? It doesn't dry real quick. That's what I like about it. And I think this is getting clogged up again. Let me just uh, open it up here again. There we go. All right. There we go. That's oozing out there. And I'll just squeeze out a glob here. And I'm going to close this up here. And let me just get some here. And like I said, I'm just going to just go all the way around here like so and uh, and on this stuff um, you want to make sure you put enough down on it to hold it and just try not to make a mess here if you get it on here just gonna wipe it off here that okay and like I said I'll speed this video up here again I want to bore you with it here putting this stuff on her but what we're gonna do is just gonna put a nice generous bead of this stuff around it And again, don't be in a hurry to do it. Take your time. And it's all going to get squished down when we put that on there. And like I said, you get a, a nice long work time on this. And then we'll gives you plenty of time to position it too.
and um, you can even put some on the back of that gasket too which I might do that just make sure we have enough on it here So I think we got all the way around it here. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna drop this down on it here, and we're trying to get it positioned here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and kind of, whoops, I'm going to push this down here. Let's make sure this is down all the way here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit overnight. Uh, in a couple hours it's probably good enough, but we're just going to let it sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and then uh, we'll uh, take and we'll glue the underneath side of this onto that. And uh, ought to be an interesting, interesting challenge to do this here too, let me tell you. To not get it over the place so anyway uh, yeah so 
it's in there. I'm just going to kind of run my finger in here and just kind of clean some of this excess up here a little bit just to kind of smooth it out here a little bit after me poking it here. There we go. I think we look pretty good though. It's this stuff ought to stick really good on this here. All right, let's do the other one. I'm gonna set this off to the side. We'll do the other one here. So we're gonna do, do the other one here and get this all glued up here. Let me get the sir out here. And uh, just an FYI, when you get these uh, surrounds on these uh, foam uh, parts of the speaker here, um, order a couple extra just in case you screw one up. It doesn't hurt. Um, and uh, it's better to have too many of them than not enough. So, all right, so we're going to get this one all painted up here with the glue here. Good. All right, let's stick it down. These look so much nicer now, huh? That's not, it's not so ugly. All right, so we're gonna sink this down into the glue here. Make sure it's stuck down in here. I think we're stuck down pretty good there. Like I said, this stuff sticks to just about anything. It's pretty amazing. I think we're gonna leave well enough alone here. Mm 
Okay, all right, I think we're good. We are uh, stuck down here real good. And uh, yeah, so like I said, we're gonna let this dry overnight and then we'll glue it behind the dust cover here. All right, so we'll be back in a few. Okay, so now we've let this dry overnight and uh, on the outer surround here. Now we're going to do the inner surround. So what we're going to do um, is, you notice I have the, I'm just going to call it this little lip right here. This is actually over the outside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint, or not paint rather, but to apply the glue on the inside of this cone where the old glue was and then what we're going to do then is we're just going to slip this on over it like this and then uh, it'll adhere itself and then we'll put something very light on it just to make sure it makes good contact so that's what we're going to do now and we're going to use the same type of adhesive the flex glue and so what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna very carefully we're gonna put this in here not try to, I'm just only gonna get it on this edge here and I'm just gonna very lightly do it and again I'm gonna probably speed this video up because otherwise uh, it's gonna be very boring to a lot of you here so I'm going to take my time, I'm going to go around it here, and we're just going to apply this right, you can see right here where I put that glue, and this ring's going to slip over it. So we're going to keep at it here. here just to kind of get this started here once you get it started you can walk it all the way around here very slowly and this stuff here's the glue I'll wipe it off here in a second There we go. All right, so we are down on it there. Okay, so I'm gonna take a Q-tip here and just kind of very carefully, not too wet, just kind of mop up that extra adhesive here, so. Just, just a little bit, not we don't want to get too much on that foam because when you get that alcohol on the foam it does weird things to it but eventually it'll go back to its shape here and I just want to get this glue off of it here
and uh, we'll make this look a little nicer. I'll take the alcohol and I hit it. But anyway, it is down on there. Okay, I see that glue kind of oozing up on it a little bit, and that's fine. I think uh, I should have got the black. It would have blended in a lot better, but oh well. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just place something on this, just just a little weight to compress it, so that way this underneath here will make a good bond with it. Yeah, it didn't look too terrible. So, good. All right. So, um, I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little weight to put on there, and I'll be right back. pretty good and even if and even if you get this stuff on the wire it's, it's non-conductive it's rubbery so uh, don't worry about that so anyway so we're gonna get this seated down on here and we'll put four quarters on this one too get my multi-tool here again Like I said, we'll wipe up that extra glue on here on the on the uh, front of the dust cover here. Just gotta take your time, walk your way around it here. Take the alcohol and kind of clean that off of there. Again, very lightly.
I'm just gonna hit it with the alcohol one more time here and then we'll put some uh, weight on this one too. So we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna put some weight on that one there. Be right back. And just open. So we're just going to let that sit and uh, we'll let that sit with the other one. We're going to let that sit overnight just to make sure we got a good bond there. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on those enclosures and I'm going to show you how to start working on those. Be back in a minute. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on these enclosures here and, um, Zoom out of here a little bit. And for the most part, these are in really good shape. There's just a few little dings on it here. And uh, and also the old speaker foam deteriorated. And as you can see, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see it, there's like little black specks there. And here you see a big piece of it there. So, yeah, I used compressed air. It got a lot of it out, but there's very little clearance between this inner, inner piece and the outer piece. So I'm gonna have to get uh, real creative here how to get that out. And uh, I gotta make me something that's basically like a brush that's got real long bristles so I can get in there and pull them out. So here's some in there and there's some in there. And believe me, there's, this thing was loaded with it. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you how to polish these up. Now, on acrylic, it's uh, like I said, it's a PMMA uh, material, and um, it's uh, it does scratch relatively easy, but not nearly as easy as polycarbonate. And but the nice thing about acrylic is you can put a mirror finish on it. So, um, like I said. Um, I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna to try to get this up where we can see it here. I'm gonna pick out a spot that's kind of really bad here. So basically there's um, certain methods you can use to polish up acrylic, all right? So we're gonna do the most basic method, which a lot of people that work in the industry, like big slabs of, of uh, acrylic that maybe it's got a lot of scratches on the surface. Uh, they literally just take 400 grit sandpaper, they'll go back and forth on it on a certain direction, 
to get those big scratches out then they will go up to a from there they'll go up to like maybe to a um, an 800 same thing and then to like a 1500 same thing and then they might go to like a, a 2000 it just depends on the situation and then in between there they can use you can actually use rubbing compound on it too to get the fine scratches out like even a regular automotive rubbing compound um, we're going to use uh, Meguiar's uh, uh, it's a uh, biscuits for uh, windshield um, or not windshield but headlamp uh, the enclosures that goes over your headlights They're, those are usually made out of polycarbonate and they get scratched up they yellow notoriously and that's because of the ultraviolet polycarbonate gets yellowed from the ultraviolet so that stuff takes it right off the yellowing but it's a very 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 fine abrasive and that will polish this up amazingly however there's a few scratches that it will not take out uh, so we're gonna do it like right back here here's a you know you get your seam lines here that's so you can tell this was a two-piece mold and that's how it was molded and then because uh, that's how the center inner cert is in there and uh, like I said we're just gonna go over it with I'm gonna go over it with the 1500 grit paper and this is what I got. I got variable uh, different selections here. This is also wet dry too. Uh, I'm just going to do it dry, but you can do it wet also. And again, I'm just doing this method. This is how I've always polished up acrylic. And it's just like the professional. If you had a really huge area you had to do, you could use a like a power thing, but it cannot it has to be orbital for one thing and it cannot be high speed it has to be a pretty slow speed because otherwise you can melt the, the acrylic you can burn it um, literally but this is nice this is wet dry it feels like it's got like a felt almost like a felt side on the back of it there and it's very very pliable and you can see here it says wet dry but like I said we're gonna do the, the dry on it and we're gonna I'm just gonna hit it with the 1500 and I think we'll be fine and uh, 600 wet dry. I'm just, just looking at all the different ones here. We get uh, 600, 600. So yeah, 15, we have two 15s here, we do. All right, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, um, let me just get this lit up here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, let me get um, situated here. All right. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna concentrate on this this area here. Um, let me see. Let me find a really bad scratch so I can show you guys real dramatically. Here we go. Right here. Here's scuffs right here. So what we're gonna do. And you want to follow the shape of it. You don't want to just stand, stand in one spot. You do that, then you're going to be able to tell it. So what you want to do is just go like this. You don't have to bear down real hard on it. Okay. And you can see how it's scuffing up. And you can see right here, you can see the, the little... I'm trying to get this in camera. You can see right there. That's the little scratch right there. So we're going to work this over a little bit, okay? And we're just going to take our time. We're not going to do it in a hurry. Like I said, this one's pretty good already. There's not too many things on it. And, and you're just going to kind of do it until you don't see it anymore. I'm going to go over here and do this one here. Okay, that looks pretty good there. All right, now you're saying, oh my God, it's ruined, it's ruined. It's not. Now I'm gonna go and get the Meguiar's polish here. And uh, I'm gonna show you how this will clean up. I'm gonna do one more little spot here. Okay, hold on. 
this one. They just kind of go in a light circular motion. Okay, all right, there we go. That looks pretty good. That's nice and scuffed up there. Now we're going to make it look pretty again. So let me go get my Meguiar's here. We're going to use a, a cotton cloth on it. You could use even use a microfiber cloth right, too so if you want. We're going to, this is the <laughs> Meguiar's. This works really good. This is for plastic. I use this in modeling too, uh, like little plastic canopies for like uh, little, you know, model planes or windows and stuff like that. You can shine this up on any kind of modeling project, but you see right here a little headlight right there. It, you can take the nastiest looking headlight and make it look brand new again. It's really amazing stuff. So anyway, I'm going to put just a small drop of it here. Right here. Okay. Didn't take much. And just kind of smear it on the rag a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work this over here. And again, just go in a circular motion. And it's going to take you a couple times. Okay. Because what you're doing now, all polishing is, is you're putting smaller uh, consecutive scratches over deep scratches so the deep scratches fade away because you're doing a consecutive polishing with smaller scratches on top of it that's all polishing is and uh, like I said you will be surprised like I say it takes a couple times here we'll get it we'll get it all cleared up here and you can already look Array, see how, see, how, see how it's starting to clear up right there. We're going to do it a couple more times and it will be looking good. I'm going to get a little more polish on it there. And so like I said, you know, on something like this, just you just kind of do it in sections. Um, don't try to do the whole thing at one time unless it's really scarred up all over. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to And yeah, if you had the right kind of power tool It would definitely make this a lot quicker But again, it's got to turn really s slow You don't want it like 5200 RPM or more like a couple hundred RPM You want it to turn pretty slow with a nice big polishing bonnet on it orbital too. It getting squeaky. So let's Okay, and you see there it's, it's looking looking better. Right there got just a little bit more to it's hard to really see it. But uh, that big scratch is gone. Now so what we're doing is we're just polishing this up to get it to look like that. Okay. Like I said, you spend two, three hours on this, and you'll have them looking beautiful again. The nice thing about it is, is you know, if you were to get a scuff on it again, you can go back and just do this again on it. Even if you have the speaker in here, you can still do it. It's not gonna, you know, be in your way. But like I said, just take your time. Okay, so I get this all polished up. That's looking pretty good now. I'm just gonna over just a little bit more. 
so so what I'll do is like I said I just pick out a couple spots here just kind of go over here kind of get some of these surface scratch very very light surface scratches these will come off real easy okay so let's uh, work this over a little bit here And like I said, guys, you know, as I say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, by all means, don't do it. But I'm doing it. And like I said, it's like anything. Um, you got to treat it with respect. You don't want to, you know, use the most heaviest duty thing on it. You kind of don't want to do an experiment with it there. And like I said, if I really wanted to rub this out really even more, I'd get like an automotive um, rubbing compound, and that'll really scour it. So like I said, though, you got to start heavy and work your way up. Don't worry about those seam marks. Those are supposed to be in there. That's the way it was from the factory. Those are not cracks. That's just mold marks from what was molded from the mold. And you can see, pretty darn good. That cleaned up really good. Yeah. Little spot right there. Okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. There's a couple of spots I'm going to hit. I won't do that on camera. There's a couple more spots I'm going to do here, but you get the idea. And uh, so now our next project is to get that leftover speaker enclosure out of there, a little pieces of uh, foam that's still stuck in there. And unfortunately, there's no way to get this apart. Boy, if you could just pop that off, be done with it. You could even polish the inside of it up if you wanted. So, um,. Like I said, I gotta make me up a little tool to get up in there so I don't scratch the enclosure. And like stuff like if it's like if you got glue in there, then put a little glue on the Q-tip there and just get that glue off of it there. Okay, that's all it is. That's glue from the old speaker enclosure. And you can put a little alcohol. Now take all that stuff off. Yeah, that's all I have to do. I'll have to spend some time cleaning that up in there. So anyway, guys, so that's how you polish them up here. And um, all uh, on the video, there'll be things I'll show you all different uh, different things you can use to polish acrylic. There's actually acrylic polishing kits you can buy online too. And it tells you exactly how to do it. This is more of a uh, low tech method on it. But, you know, I have friends that work in plastics and stuff, and they say, this is what we do. It works good. Just, it's like everything else. You just got to learn how to work with it. Now, like, I feel a little bump right here. And like as I said, as you polish this, 
you will start to see little different things pop up on you here. See, you still feel it there. So I'm just doing it real, real lightly here. You don't need to grind away on it there. So I still see that little mark in there. You just do it so you don't see it anymore. Well, like I said, you have a big mess before you're all done with it. Alright, so let's hit this one here, make it look beautiful again. And I'll come after a lot of directions. I'll do the circular. Then I'll go back and forth like this, and I'll go to the circular again. Okay guys, so um, that's going to be it on this here, so I'm going to figure out a way to get this stuff out. I'll show you how to get that out. I'm going to make myself a little tool and I'll show you how we get those little crummy things out of there. Alright, so we'll be back in a few. Okay guys, so um, I got all the, um, well, 99% of the, um, I still got a little piece of something to get out of there, that little fuzz. But um, yeah, these uh, cleaned up pretty good. I am going to hit them just a little bit more uh, as far as with the polish, but um, as far as all the little pieces of the original foam, I got that all out. It took a while. What I wound up using was a piece of just regular 20 pound white paper, cut it in a really thin strip, and I fished it in between here. You have to kind of bend it, and and it, it and and uh, this plastic gets a static charge on it. So when you put the paper in there, and when you get the close to the uh, foam, it kind of sticks to the paper, so you can get it out of there. The other problem is though, sometimes there's glue in there so I had to go with the Q-tip, a little alcohol and clean it up. And then what I actually did is put some alcohol on all the strips of paper to kind of clean it up in between there to get that glue, uh, the remnants of the glue off and I think it pretty much all came off. So um, they definitely look a whole heap and bunch better than what they did before. So that's good. So those are pretty much done. And then these are all nice and dried and just going to kind of hit this a little bit more there to get those fingerprints and stuff off of it for me uh, gluing that up and so anyway uh, we're going to be ready to uh, put this back together and that's what we're going to do now I'm going to solder the wires back onto these I'm not going to show that on camera because you can see watch the previous video I was doing that on it and uh, anyway uh, we'll get those soldered back on there and mount her back up so they will be in there They're looking a whole lot better than it did before and uh, we'll get the wires we'll get all that coming out and then we will test them to see how they work and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do the end of the connectors uh, um, I'll figure out a way to hook it I'll, I'll use my iMac here and I'll hook it to that but uh, 
anyway um, yeah I think we did pretty good though I, I'm really happy the way it came out and uh, so yeah I don't mean to be rambling on here but it's been a long day this video has been over a course of a week um, all the stuff going on in the world and stuff and work so anyway all right guys so next time you see this uh, it'll be all back together all wired up and uh, we're gonna test it see how it works be back in a minute okay guys so um, we are all back together and uh, I have already tested them and they work okay um, and what I mean by that is the original surrounds for the hard and card on speakers they are more uh, rubbery and they definitely have a little better sound to them uh, these sound okay um, but like I said when you can compare it to those those <laughs> those sound much better so what I did is I uh, took and wired this up and I got a stereo jack on it here and so I can hook it either Fred please uh, I can hook it to either the uh, headphone output on my iMac or I can use the um, USB and this has got a um, amplifier in it already microphone and headphone now when I use this um, it's not it's the bass isn't nearly as good okay when I run it through the head port jack um, the bass is definitely louder on it I can actually even distort these speakers a little bit but I just think that's kind of a limitation of a couple things that the amp on the head phone jack because that's not really made to, to drive speakers like this and uh, this one uh, uh, probably again it's uh, this has a limitation on it but you know because I got this for the cube before I actually got the um, proper speakers for it because there's no amp on that G4 cube so anyway, um, and I will I will demonstrate it. And Fred, please do not bite these cables. Okay, Fred. Uh, my kitty cat. This is Frederica. She's a Maine Coon. She's still a kitten. She's only like six months old, but she is naughty in terms of she loves wires. And uh, so I always have to keep everything out of her sight here. So, okay, so I got this plug back in Frederica please so I'm gonna demonstrate for you here the difference in the sound okay so um, we're gonna get these faced here and I'm gonna plug this into the amp first okay the USB amp all right and I'm gonna play the YouTube music here so that way we don't get in any copyright trouble so and we'll compare it here so um, this is one of my tracks that I play when I'm speeding things up so I'm gonna let you listen to it here and you're gonna listen to the difference here versus being plugged into the headphone jack so this is the USB adapter let's start this over again Left, right channel worked just fine on it there. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pause this, and we're going to do it through the headphone jack okay so let me unplug it here so I'm gonna plug it to the headphone jack here all right now we're gonna do the same thing again here and we're gonna re rewind it here we're gonna start it over here and listen to the difference Definitely louder. Definitely. 
getting louder doing the headphone jack. Okay, now we'll switch to the other one here. Okay, and same thing. That's cranked all the way up. So, the, the, like I said, the headphone jack it has a little bit more um, amplitude to it. In the USB one, as you can see, that is loud. Um, but they work good. They work pretty good. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not disappointed um, because when I first got these things, as you saw, the foam was all deteriorated. That's what happens to these guys after a time. And uh, so we got some new surrounds. And again, I could not find the actual hardened Cardon ones, um, but uh, these are relatively pretty close. Uh, like I said, the hardened Cardon ones are more rubbery feeling and that bubble's a little bit more bigger and you can when you depress it uh it's it goes in much easier these are a little firmer okay uh compared to that one but they work they work just fine and uh so i consider this a success and i can plug this like i said using that audio adapter i can plug it right into the headphone jack and it works um, and I tried different songs, um, and the bass is pretty good. Um, again, the original ones here, up there, they, uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, they work much better uh, in terms of uh, sound reproduction. I just think that, uh, you know, uh, that's what happens when you have the very, very original ones. Like I said, everything is original on these except for that surround. Got the same enclosure, got the same drivers, uh, same wiring harness, but this is the defining difference. And um, uh, the only thing I would have done different is I would have used the black glue rather than the white glue. Uh, but that's just personal preference. So anyway, um, be back in okay. just a second here. Okay guys, so this has been a, a long week. We worked on the speakers and they are 100% functional again. Like I said, just a little bit of difference in the sound quality. The ones on the Cube, those have the original hardened cardone surrounds. For these are aftermarket surrounds. Those definitely sound a little better, but these sound good. Don't get me wrong, these sound pretty darn good. Uh, like I said, everything is original on these except for the part that we had to replace on it that rotted out over the years. But yeah, guys, um, you know, it's this project's not for everybody. Um, it's like anything else, you do it at your own risk. You know, it just depends on how comfortable you feel with things. Um, me, I'm pretty fearless when it comes to stuff. I just tear it apart and work on it. Um, doesn't usually bother me too much. Once in a while, I'll, I'll kind of err on the side of caution, but, but yeah, but, so I got a nice extra set of speakers, and like I said, um, with this one here, we have the, um, stereo jack on it, so we can either plug this into the USB on the back of the computer, or plug it into the headphone jack directly, and, um, like I said, there's definitely a little difference in the sound quality when you go from one to the other. It sounds a little better using it with the headphone jack as far as overall loudness, but the clarity is a little bit better with the uh, USB uh, amp here. So yeah, so I'm very, not very happy how these came out. And um, so yeah, guys, so anyway, um, sorry it's been a little while for the video. Uh, we're still doing the giveaway. Um, I'm gonna uh, do a subscriber update here in the next video. It'll probably come out uh, tomorrow. And uh, but yeah, we're still doing the microphone giveaway. We're we're getting close. So just keep on telling all your friends uh, because you know once I do this, then not too far in a distance future, I'm gonna have another giveaway. 
and of course we're going to have to have a lot more subscribers to be eligible for that one so all right guys uh this is saturday tomorrow's easter so everybody i hope you have a great holiday weekend no matter what your religion is um, have a great weekend be healthy be safe take care of yourselves we'll all get through this thing that's going on in the world together we'll, we're on it together it will all eventually come to an end and we'll all be thankful for that uh, but you know what sometimes these things happen in life and uh, just you know stay home with like you're supposed to enjoy your family watch youtube videos like mine so um like i said uh we're going to be doing the update on the giveaway and uh, that's all i really have to say so you guys have a great time and i will see you in the next video bye